Hello and welcome back my lovely friends. So in today's video we are going to be painting lovebirds in a beautiful rose garden. For painting this we are going to be using this canvas. You can always use acrylic painting paper. In step 1 we are first going to be painting the flowers. So I am just creating the branch here by using this kind of pointed round brush. And I'm using burnt sienna. You can use any dark brown shade. Remember the end corners are very fine so that it looks very natural. And now I'm going to be adding this kind of pink color on the center. You can use any light shade of pink. Just create these small round circles so that I can remember where the placement of the roses is going to be. So this is the reason first we are creating the base. And once it will dry completely, then we'll be picking up a pointed round brush again. And then using this dark pink color or any shade of pink and we'll start creating the rose. Now here is a very easy technique that you can use and create roses. Just pick a point on the center first and start overlapping these lines around it and increase the size of the line and you'll see that you will be able to create a basic structure for a rose. Now we'll quickly wash the brush and use this moist brush to blend the colors there and as you can see the colors are blending very easily reason being because the colors were still moist so this effect will only happen if the colors are still moist and you will be able to create this kind of blurred and watercolor kind of effect to your roses so we'll be following the same technique and creating the remaining flowers as well Alright, so now our flowers are ready. We are now going to be adding some leaves around the flower. For that, I picked up this sap green color. And by using this filbert brush or any flat brush that you have, you can randomly apply the color like this. Remember, do not apply a lot of color at this stage because we want to create that kind of watercolor effect in the background. So then I washed my brush and I'm picking up a lot of water on my brush and just trying to blend the end corners so that I can create that kind of watercolor effect. In case you want to spray some water on top of it, you can always do that as well. So this is how the background is coming up and I'm really liking how it's turning out to be. We we'll let this dry completely and then move on to the next step. Once the top layer was drying completely, then I moved on to the bottommost part and I started creating a very darker background. But if in case you're following me, please do not make this at this stage because I'm going to be completely applying gesso on top of it so that the white canvas can be seen. So just don't do this step. I didn't like the background, so I will be rectifying that later. Right now what we are doing is, once the base color was dried completely, that is the background. Now we are adding these tiny little leaves around the flower. So let's do that and create denser leaves and then move on to the next step. Here as you can see, I have applied a layer of gesso because I didn't like the background. So I am going to be painting on top of it. And once the background was completely dry, now we are going to be painting the lovebirds. And before that, let's get ready with this cute little swing. One tip here would be for creating these flowers, once you get the base right, let it dry completely. Work in layers, this will ensure that whenever you are adding that kind of lighter petal on top, it will be visible and will not get blend and mixed with the bottom layer. So this is one important thing. And in case you don't have a very beautiful shade of pink or you're not happy with your colors at this point of time, you can always think of adding a fluorescent pink shade to your you know, normal kit that you already have and mix that with your pink color so that it becomes very vibrant and saturated. So this is one hack that you can always try. I always mix little pigment of fluorescent pink to my basic pink shade. 
And as you can see in the background, there is this bird visible. So this is something that I made in the first layer. Completely avoid that because I'm going to be making it again and doing a different kind of composition. So here I'm first getting ready with the flowers and all those beautiful leaves and creating the heart shape by using the stem. And then in the last step, we are going to be painting the birds. So it is important to add this kind of dense black background first for creating the nest and then later we lighten down the shade of this dark brown color. You mix some white color to the same pigment and as you can see now it looks like you know little protruding in 3D. We have to work in layers at this stage. First is the darker color which is going to be the shadows on the center area where the depth can be seen and then these out of fine lines have to be lighter in shade. And as we move forward and this base color will dry, we'll again add a very lighter shade on top those fine lines to create a very 3D and protruding look to our nest. I also added these cute eggs and they are super tiny and cute so you can add as much as you want even one or two but I don't know why I painted three. <laughs> All right so um, we are doing the final you know detailings and adding those final lines and let's see how this turns out to be. And in the last stage, we are going to be painting the lovebirds. So here, as you can see, I'm painting it directly by using this pointed round brush. If in case you're a beginner, feel free to just draw it by using a pencil first. You can always do the mistakes by doing the pencil and create the basic shape. You can even erase it there in case you don't like it. And in case you want to have the traceable and learn paintings with me in detail, you can join me on my Patreon. The link is mentioned in the description box below. By using this light pigment of blue, I am just applying this over here in limited area and then blending and merging it by using a moist brush. This is so simple and easy and I am using this pointed round brush only which is round brush number 0 because the area is very small so we are able to paint this very easily. Alright, so now let's follow the same step and paint the next bird as well. For the final detailing, I'm blending both the flowers with the background by using this kind of white color and moving in this circular direction so that everything looks very blurred and merged and part of the background actually. So this is one easy technique that you can always follow and this is how it looks like. And once it is ready, you can apply a layer of varnish and let it dry completely and this is the final look. I hope you enjoyed painting this with me. In case you plan to recreate it, do share them with me on my Instagram. I love seeing them and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Till then take care and thanks for watching. Bye.